What's up and welcome back. I'm John Stark from MyMovieGuy.com, your favorite blind film critic. And this is The Boys, season four, episode six. I think I got that right. Still on Amazon, still has audio description. <laughs> um, this episode is wild. Uh, I don't even know how to recap this. Obviously, this is a recap, so spoilers, spoilers abound. I, I don't do play-by-play. -play. I kind of just do like stream of consciousness. Um, I'm starting to think that with these shows that the best way to do it is just kind of like touch on what happened to each character. Like where where was their trajectory for the episode um, for like the main characters that you might care about. So let's start off with some of the easy people. Frenchie. Oh, we didn't even see Frenchie. Frenchie was in jail the whole time and Yumiko uh, was trying to get uh, him to accept visitation and it's seen sort of both at the beginning and at the end of the episode uh, but he is never seen he was not in this episode at all uh, in terms of the main cast um uh the deep is not in much of this episode he has a speech about feeling powerful when he knocks somebody like nose back into their head and uh you know he's like i, I used to be you know, used to feel a certain way about being laughed at, but then I started realizing that when I beat somebody so bad they can't walk anymore, they're not laughing anymore. Something like that is really kind of disturbing, but it just kind of shows you where Deep is now. Um, and we we get to see slash hear Black Noir, and I don't know what's happening with his character. I have this feeling it's not the same, but I don't know where we got this Noir from. Because this noir is basically like, I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> this, noir, this noir, I've picked up on this all season. It's like very much not like the noir we've had. And I don't know. It, it, what, did Homelander not want to admit Black Noir is dead? Like, why did we replace Black Noir? You know, like, why at all? Why didn't you just go get a new hero? Like, who is this guy? And why, is, why did he, you replace him? Like, where did this guy come from? Anyway, um... I definitely missed that. Whatever, tell me what episode that was in because I I don't understand why we need him. He could just be a different hero. Like you could have just gutted Black Noir and left him and then, oh, new hero popped up, you know? Um, so uh, Tech Nine is in here. Oh my God. Tech Nine uh, is the final episode for Tech Nine, by the way, for anybody who was looking forward to seeing more of that. Uh, he pops up. He's hosting the party for the soups at his house. They're having this big gathering for Homelander, and there's some politicians there where, of course, they're talking about their plans to essentially overthrow the government. And they're hosting at Tech Nine's uh, place, and Tech Nine has invited uh, Web Slinger, Web, Web something, Web, Web Ringer. I, I don't know what this dude's name was. There's some, like, really, like, low-level hero that they need uh, that, that, are, that the boys go to um, who is kind of like Spider-Man, but is not, obviously can't use that name. Uh, but basically same idea in terms of powers. Uh, but they, they, of course, do their boys' version of it and make it gross. Uh, and just <laughs> make it really sort of, eh, you know, um, and Huey has to, which they're concerned, like, Huey, are you okay after the last episode? Are you, are you good to be here? And he's like, yeah, well, Huey makes the most sense of the group because Butcher's off doing something else. Uh, and basically we have two guys and two girls, so it can't be the girls, uh, so it's basically Huey, Huey or Melk who's going to go inside this costume and pretend to be a dude. And I got the idea that it was a white guy, so it has to be Huey and not Melk. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, Huey has to go inside this costume and the things that happen to Huey and the... the oh my god, the, the, the Sato masochistic stuff the basement that tech nine has the secret thing is 
we go, of course, on the boys. This is why when people go, the boys is not the boys anymore. I'm like, is it not? I feel like the boys from the beginning was always trying to subvert your expectations and push the boundaries of what it could possibly do or contain on television. Like how much it could test your patience. I feel like that's what it's always doing is like, what will you put up with? What is your furthest limit? What are you willing to watch on this show? You know, I mean, like the gore, everything. Uh, it's topped easily horror, like actual horror films. Like the gore is way further uh, than certain horror films. Uh, the stuff that it says, the stuff that it has to say, uh, the sexual content, everything. Uh, if this if this was on t if this was in the theaters, it, they could. I don't even think they could release it. You know, it's like I don't even, I don't know what the grade would be if <laughs> there'd have to be edits. This only works on streaming. You know, um, so uh, yeah, it's it's this weird thing, and poor Huey gets put through all of this and. Tech Nine likes a lot of weird stuff, and he still got his. Basically, he had offered Web. The reason why Web Crawler, I don't know what his name is, was invited to the party, was because he wanted to be Tech Nine's sidekick. Well, what that really means is, <laughs> basically, Tech Nine's bitch. So they go into this like Bat Cave type thing because I guess Tech Nine is representative of Batman. He's wealthy, comes from a wealthy family, um, and down there is just like this dungeon of of. S&M stuff it's just and he still has his last sidekick like tied up and gagged over there in the corner not dead but uh you know just he's and this is web crawlers audition to be the sidekick and lots of weird things have to happen and on top of that Ashley comes in and Ashley is I guess into this as well and she wants to do some nasty things to web crawler I'm keeping, I'm going to keep saying web crawler. I don't think that that's his name, but I can't remember what it is. Um, which is Huey. So basically Huey is in this costume, which has a mask. And so they don't originally, they don't know who he is. And he has to do all this other stuff. And, and she's like, I'm, I'm going to pee on you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and apparently a lot of this stuff happens to him, but it just kind of like happens off camera and, he just is covered in stuff when they find him later on. He's just like, and uh, finally he just kind of breaks down. He's like, I'm not okay. And I'm like, probably about a lot of things. Like, not just are you not okay about your, you know, what happened to your dad. But also, I'm imagining there are some things that happened down there in the basement. <laughs> that you're just now starting to process. And you're like, I don't know if I can ever be clean again. Um... So, yeah, uh, he he really just signed up for the wrong job in this mission. Poor Huey. Huey did not get. Uh, but I love how with Tech Nine, uh, when they do go to rescue Huey, how they get Tech Nine is through his money. They're like, how do you? Because they're trying to like beat him, right? But he's he's into S and M, so he actually gets pleasure out of it. So they're like, how do you hurt? Somebody like this. How do you really hurt them? And they're like, oh yeah. And basically the it's his sidekick that that points them to it. And they show him the computer, which gives them access to um all of his funds. And then they start donating to these charities. It's really hilarious. Um and uh, just like really obvious charities. Uh, I'm surprised it said Elizabeth Warren, by the way, because they could have thought of other charities. But they were like, we're going to donate $40 million to Elizabeth Warren's pack. And I was like, wow, is she in this universe? Because <laughs> you guys don't use real politicians. I guess, I guess she is. Uh, Elizabeth Warren is in The Boys. She's canon now in The Boys. Look at that. Um, but what else did they download? They they donated to... Uh, I can't, but the, like the last thing, the, the final straw is like when they're about to down, download, uh, not download, but um, donate to Black Lives Matter. And then finally that breaks him. Tech Nine is like, I'll tell you whatever you need to know. <laughs> and uh, the whole, his whole thing in this is that he owns a bunch of prisons and Homelander wants to basically turn them into internment camps for anybody who disagrees with him. They're just going to fill his prisons with people who disagree with their pro like anybody who 
I guess instead of just killing people because that would look bad for Homelander, he's just going to find ways of rounding them up and then putting them in these prisons and locking the door and walking away. Um, yeah, so that's the that's the master plan. Uh, and then out of nowhere, Alfred comes and kills Tech Nine, which is great. Uh, it's such a Batman reference. So yeah, Tech Nine has a butler who has a name. It's not Alfred, but it's basically Alfred because it's basically Batman. This is their commentary on Batman, um, which is why they have to take an elevator down into the Batcave. But it's not a Batcave; it's an S and M cave. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like this is like everything about Tech Nine, um, and uh, yeah. So his equivalent to Alfred strangles him and kills him, and, and uh, the boys get to escape because of it. Um, Milk. Uh, his great development is uh, he has a panic attack after he shoots um, Sage, uh, who he thinks is about to alert Homelander. Because he's like, you know, you are you may be smart, but you're not stupid. You're not bulletproof. And somehow she gets hit with a bullet to where it doesn't kill her, but it's like in her head and it makes her stupid. So she spends, like, the rest of the episode, and I, this is the one thing I got frustrated with, is that Homelander can see the bullet, and I know he's not dumb, and this doesn't raise alarm, you know what I'm saying? Like, this doesn't make him suspicious. He doesn't immediately go, how the fuck did a bullet get in your head? You know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't seem odd to him that there's a bullet in her head, because it directly says that he can see it. Because she's like talking about like getting Taco Bell, and uh, and he needs her to like be in t be smart, which she can't be right now. Um, and he can see it, but like he doesn't immediately go, okay, what the fuck, you know, or figure out how to get it out. I mean, like they have all these super powered people around, and like really nobody can pull that bullet out. Nobody, he knows no one with magnetism who could pull that bullet out. And, or nobody who can heal her or fix her at all, or a doctor, nothing. We got nothing in this moment. Like, everything hinges on Sage being intelligent, and Homelander just looks at the bullet and is like, oh, that's, that's strange. Well, uh, I guess we'll go about our day. Uh, and then he still calls on her. And it's like, this was the this is the one part about the episode I didn't like. It's like, you see the bullet, you know she's dumb. Like, what the, what the fuck? <laughs> Homelander is many things, but he's not that stupid. <laughs> but they played him as, like, just oblivious here. Like, he... J There's a fucking bullet in her head. <laughs> and you... <laughs> like, I don't... I, I This this part of the thing just really kind of blew my mind. I was just like... Uh, H Homelander overreacts to everything, too. And the fact that he didn't immediately just go nuts that his, you know, golden egg had been cracked... Uh, just was very just shocking to me. Um, a train seemed to make it out yet again, make it in and out without being seen. So he's still safe, but he's walking a fine line. He was they guilted him into rescuing milk and taking milk to a hospital because they thought he was having a heart attack and then a panic attack. But then he found out he was having a panic attack. So milk is mm is fine. Um, uh, with Starlight didn't really do much. She just kind of knocks out Firecracker and then eventually rescues Huey. She's part of that. Uh, Yumiko is kind of part of the same thing. She has this interesting thing where she had, it's between her and A-Train. She has to communicate with A-Train by pulling out book titles because she has nothing to write on. So there's this library of books and so she's trying to find these books to, to use their titles to communicate with them. It was kind of cute, but also I was like, are these book titles really? Like, it just wasn't, I didn't believe it. Like the the book titles weren't uh, like well known books. You know what I'm saying? Like they were just like I was like, is that a book? Are you just? I mean, this is clever, but I don't know. I don't know that we need this. Anyway, um, so I touched on all those people. Uh, Firecracker is she tries to get in on the action because uh, at the beginning, by the way, brilliant. Uh, I know, again, I'm sorry if you feel not, no longer represented and triggered by the show because you realize that you're the villain now in the show. Um, but Firecracker starts off 
she now has the anchor that they killed in the last episode. She now has his show. So she starts off with Jewish space lasers. And that's such a direct reference to the person who I think this character is crafted after. That is, it's brilliant. Um, it's, uh, it is, uh, I haven't seen whether or not that person is tweeting about the show, but they should absolutely feel triggered at this point. Um, because for a while I've thought Firecracker was modeled after Marjorie Taylor Greene and that reference absolutely just sealed that deal. Just Firecracker, Marjorie Taylor Greene. There's no way that they didn't think about that because she was the one that made the Jewish space lasers comment to begin with. <laughs> So, um, and she has kind of like a Southern accent. Uh, they keep kind of talking about how she's like rural or whatever, which is more interesting. Taylor Green represents kind of like a rural district in Georgia. So, I mean, there are things there. Um, but Firecracker comes through for Homelander <laughs> because she, she has this great speech, uh, about her devotion to Homelander and, uh, and he, Homelander is confused by it at first, right? Because he's like, well, how do I know that you weren't the, the leak? It looks like you let Starlight get away. And, uh, she basically says how devoted she is and then reveals to him that she's been taking like a certain amount of hormone treatments so she can produce milk, even though she's not pregnant, doesn't have a kid. She produces breast milk for Homelander. So like the episode almost ends with Homelander being breastfed by, firecracker this is the show by the way this is it this is the moment um and i with everything that happened in this show with everything that happened in this episode uh all of the crazy stuff i just <laughs> there are people who are angry at this show for various reasons and again i like i said if you if i saw myself being negatively represented in the show i probably would stop watching too but the boys has always been pushing boundaries and seeing what it, what it can get away with, what an audience will watch. And I think that's all it's doing here. Now, the big reveal here is Joe. At the beginning, we get Wakey Wakey, Eggs and Bakey from Jeffrey Dean Morgan, which immediately, I'm hard as a bat at that point. Uh, just, just Jeffrey Dean Morgan just coming in there. I'm just like, oh my God, man. Uh, I'm loving the fact that he's on the show. And, uh, yes, the bat references to Negan, which is Lucille on The Walking Dead. I, I do things specifically sometimes. So, um, turns out, and I didn't pick up on it. Turns out he's not real. <laughs> he's just like, uh, Butcher's dead ex, uh, who's been haunting him. Who's part of that, like, worm that we keep seeing, like, floating around his body. Uh, he's also a vision. He's a character because we didn't know him before. We hadn't seen him before. Uh, there was no reason for us to suspect that he was that, but he is a vision. He's just, he's part of, he's inside Butcher's head. Uh, he's not real. So basically every conversation that Butcher's been having, he's been having one-sided the whole time and it's revealed at the end of the episode. And that's the mic drop moment is that Jeffrey Dean Morgan is in, uh, his Joe has been dead for years and is a figment of Butcher's imagination. And he points out, because Butcher's like, I, I can't, I don't want to do this, because essentially he's got the doctor, and the doctor says, well, we realize this was too dangerous because it becomes airborne. And if it becomes airborne, it'll kill every single person with a V in their system. And he's like, I can't do it. You know, I mean, like, that's my, you know, that's my daughter. My daughter has a uh, compound V. So, and Butcher, of course, is like, well, that's, he's has friends who have compound V. So, um, so he knows. So in that scene, he doesn't want to do it either. And, but Joe is like, this is exactly what we've been waiting for. This is what we need. And then that's when Joe reveals that, you know, first of all, Butcher's thrown because Joe shouts at the ex, the dead ex, who's talking and telling Butcher that this is wrong. You can't do this. And then she's like, he's like, shut up, bitch. And, and he's like, wait, you can see her? And he's like, of course, I, you know. And then it reveals that he's dead. And I thought that was brilliant. So really well done. Uh, I don't know where we're going, but we have another season. So I'm not, obviously not going to do season five with no soups. <laughs> so we're not going 
It's not happening in the next two episodes, but it's, it could be an end game for the final season. Unlikely because they still have Gen V, which would exist within the universe, and they would need to end Gen V if they actually killed all of the superheroes. <laughs> because then they would the Gen V wouldn't be able to exist at the same time. So Gen V would have a really short run on Amazon and then what would the show be? Like what would the franchise be to Amazon? This is a big franchise for them, so Butcher has zero percent chance of ever actually like getting this like in the worst case scenario where it does actually kill every single suit. That's not that's not happening. We're not ending the show like that. I, I can already tell you that. Um, it just, it's too much of a uh, nuclear option for the show and for the franchises surrounding it. So, because I'm sure they'll announce this, another spinoff. This will be like Game of Thrones where they have Gen V and Gen V will be in its second season. And then they'll be like, oh, by the way, we're going to do another boys spinoff with this group. So they need to be able to keep doing that with in this universe with these characters and the only way they can do that is if people can be alive with compound v in their blood so yeah the virus will not be that they're gonna have to take out homelander another way um anyway that's it that's the episode um i was pretty cool with it the only thing that i really found a problem with was homelander's reaction to sage i just expected more from that and he's smarter than that um yeah, I was just kind of like, dude, what are you? Uh, audio description definitely mentions that he can see it. And she, you can clearly tell something's up with her. Like, she is not okay. Uh, and yet he still, like, wants her to make a speech. And he tries to make the speech himself, but he can't because he's not that smart. Luckily, the you know, Senator ends up stepping in. But that whole moment for me didn't work because Homelander o always overreacts to everything. And in that moment, he didn't react at all. So it didn't match with the writing of the character. I'm sure it's what they needed for the episode, but it just didn't match with Homelander. I mean, Homelander almost, like, feels like he's going to, like, kick Firecracker's ass for letting Starlight go. But yet, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, but he's looking at Sage, who he needs, he needs her to be intelligent in that moment. And he's not upset? Bizarre. It's absolutely bizarre. Anyway, um, I'm going to give The Boys season four, episode six, an A minus, mainly because of that. Uh, I just thought it was, it was a convenient thing for writing. And I was, I'm, I'm, I'm here for most of it. Like, you know, like I, I love the fact that we push boundaries and we go different places and do weird shit and, and the, the sheep from the last episode, great. You know, uh, always pushing the envelope. But <laughs> I felt like that was so against everything that Homelander is. <laughs> Homelander would have at least blown a hole through, like, a wall or something. Like, something would have happened when he realized he didn't, he couldn't use Sage. And he, and he didn't do it. And it's just so bizarre. It's so weird. Anyway, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I'll see you guys next week with more from the boys.